Father Don. On behalf of our Knights of Columbus Council, we would like to congratulate you on your 40th anniversary to the priesthood. As men of the parish, we'd like to thank you for your friendship, leadership, wisdom, hugs, and love. You are an example to all of us on how to put on the full armor of God. Therefore, it is my sincere honor to name you the first ever St. Anne, St. Mary, Parish Catholic Man of the Year. In, admira ad in admiration of your legacy to the priesthood and this parish, this award, starting in, Ju in June 2000 of 20, will be named in your honor to a man of this parish who is a soldier of God, a member of Team Jesus, who serves the people of God and lives the Christian values and morals like you do. Thank you. In addition to that, <laughs> the Knights of Columbus are going to donate $500 to Damascus to start a legacy in your honor. Deacon David is going to tell the rest of us how we can help with that. I would just like to take a minute to thank Father Franks. I don't know if anybody noticed, but it was cloudy the whole day until Father Franks came over to give his homily, and then the sun shone through. I wasn't sure if it was Father glowing or if it was God, <laughs> but I would say that God was giving his thanks and praise to a priest who served his life for God, and I think he deserves another round of applause. Before I forget, there is going to be a brief presentation on the chapel side. If you want to filter into the chapel or go downstairs where you can watch it on television, just briefly after this before we eat. Um, but I would just like to say we are going to have a legacy fund given to Damascus in honor of Father Franks. There will be a basket downstairs if you care to donate to it. Uh, if you want to make out a large check, make it out to St. Anne, St. Mary's Parish and just put Damascus on the line, especially priests, if you'd like to make a large donation. <laughs> Seminarians, we know you get it all for free, right? So you'd be okay too. So. Uh, but yeah, if you'd like to donate, and it's not, not going to be just today, we're going to have a second collection tomorrow, second collection on Sunday, and then if you want to put it in the following week, we're going to start a legacy fund and give it to something that's very dear to Father's heart, which is uh, the Catholic youth. And... Uh, that's really all I had to say. Again, thank you, Father, for your time and effort that you put into this parish. Compared to when you got here, I wasn't there, of course, but I mean, it's, it's, it's grown so much, and we owe it to your efforts. It's Jesus Christ. You know, one of the things that is so exciting, uh, I didn't know any of this, so obviously, but the thing that is so exciting to me, when I, I first got here, we'd have maybe 50 at each church, and maybe, you know, a little more, and maybe... 60 or 70 and and there are they tell me i wonder where everybody was at there's 300 people here most of them are over in the saint francis Abbey monastery sanctuary and down in the family life we have six big screens uh this like we do every week uh has been beamed to seven continents live uh this is one of the missionary disciples that we do and we know who watches 55 percent of the people that watch are from persecuted countries around the world. And many of them, Chuck and Ardeth Mares, who are cradling Christianity, are from Bethlehem. That is their premier mass they watch every week. They were watching EWTN, they shifted to us. 
<laughs> so it's like, oh my gosh. And so these people are basically given their lives and they're watching us right here in this little country church. This is what happens when you dream. This is, I didn't have anything to do with this. This is God dreaming uh, the folks. This is amazing. This is what it's all about. And I've seen that uh, being part of Damascus since uh, 2004, Aaron and Dan, uh, Aaron Richards and Dan Dimite, uh, and all of the, the missionary disciples that are here. This is what God is doing in today's day and age. This is exciting. Uh, the Holy Spirit is with us. God is renewing the church. Let's all stand and pray. First part of this is a little ad lib for me. I'm going to take it. I'm going to make it short. Um, I first met Father Don many moons ago, back in the 1990s. I don't think I've ever told you this. At the Schmelzer reunion. Yes, I remember that. You come up to the Schmelzer reunion. You're a little bit late, but. You come out, I got out of the car, and we'd all done, got done eating, but I was just getting done eating, and I noticed all of a sudden, these kids get up, and they start flocking out of the building, and I look out there, and here you walk up, and it was just like Jesus walking out, and the kids flocking up there, and hugging you, and holding on to you, and I was like, I look, and I thought, wow, well, this is kids, you know. Next thing I know, the adults are doing the same thing, walking out to you and hugging on to you. And I thought, that's a priest. That is a, that is a real priest. And I just got thinking, someday, maybe that's Father Don's got something to do with our parish. Didn't think anything more about it. But uh, a few years later, I was at uh, St. Mary's in Lancaster for a wedding with one of the horn boys. Sitting there in the pews, and just sitting there, and all of a sudden, in you come at the back of church, standing there. This figure, and it's like, kind of an aura about you. It's almost like there's incense around you with a little bit of light, and I thought, now, come on, Deacon Dave's not around. His incense not at a wedding. I thought, there's something going on here about this man. But then I get this very distinct feeling. I mean, a real distinct feeling. Father Don Franks is going to have something to do with our parish. It's been quite a few years until we had a little year hate hiatus with no priest here at St. Mary's and St. Anne's. Next thing I know, who shows up? Father Don Franks. Uh, well, the Lord was trying to tell me something after all. Well, we get talking, Father Don Franks and I at the first meeting at the ice cream social, I believe it was, and you got to ask me, well, what's, what's, what's my vision here? And I say, well, I'd really like to see a full service church. That, you know, we, the St. Mary's has really been pushed down and around. They, they really want to kind of leave us to go to, be, go to the pastor. And you we were kind of receptive about that. And I thought, wow, this is, this is something different. I like this idea. Well, when one thing came to another, and we got working on this, this whole project. And many of you heard the story about all the different things that could be no, nothing less than divine intervention with this project on this edition. How we came up with the money, the funds, how the bishop let the thing go through, the, the Bill Davis with the diocese, how the structure of the church, the old church was just right in line, how the land laid. I mean, Father and I are going to do a scrapbook one of these years, and we're going to lay out uh, I'll bet you we've got at least a dozen events of divine intervention that happened with this edition. And I guarantee you, at least a dozen. So, Father Don. You, I really say you are the Lord. I hope he works in me.
that's my part. Okay. I serve at Father's pleasure as part of the Finance and Advisory Committee for the St. Mary's and St. Anne's, along with Brian Kaufman, Jenny Wilcox, and Victoria Beal, and Jeff Willard, and ex officio members uh, Martha, Martha Silvers, uh, Deacon Dave, and Pat Smeltzer. We all got together and uh, you inspire us. You inspire us greatly. There's many, many people, Father, that I know when they get to heaven and they gaze upon the Lord Jesus Christ's face, they're going to be able to, they're going to have to say, I thank Father Don Franks for helping me to see that face of the Lord Jesus Christ. I know that's true. But anyway, that's not what we're here for. Why I'm here is to say that we, your people, your advisors, very much want to tell you what you mean to us in a way that is kind of different. So therefore, we have, we've talked and we have unanimously voted, unanimously voted, not just the members, but also the ex officio members have voted to put your name upon this facility. The only portion of this facility that you didn't specifically name with a name, which is the Family Life Center. We want to call it the Father Donald E. Franks Father Family Life and Conference Center from here to eternity. Now, we're not dumb. We realize that's just a little out of the ordinary. We usually wait till a person dies, but we want to do it. <laughs> we want to do it now. We want to do it now. You are special to us now. We don't. You got. You got. You got a. You got a name tag. You can put on his toe. We want to do it now, and we would very much appreciate if you would accept our unanimous decision to name it in your honor. Thank you very much. I, I, I am humbled, but I just wanted Jesus' name on everything, not mine. <laughs> you are special to us in our hearts, in our souls, in our minds, in our beings. I personally want to thank you, Father, for everything you've done for us. I think you are very much a part of the Lord Jesus Christ's divine intervention within our parish. I think you're an instrument of his peace within us. And I think the only reason our parish is where it is now and where it is going in this upward uh, trajectory and for the future is very much because of you. And I thank you with all my heart. I think it's, I love Jesus so much, but I see him in all of you, and between us there's this synergy, this energy, this dynamism, and this is what happens when we're in love with the Lord. Great things can happen. Dream. He's got a dream. That's all we have to do. And God does it all. We can't, as individuals, really take credit for anything. It's common sense God working through us. I love you all. The only thing else we've got to do is decide whether you want a brass plaque or a stone <laughs> or a wood plaque or what. That's to be decided. We'll take care of that.